We're getting ready to run around on a bug merry-go-round. What kind of bug are you on? You're on a big, uh, where the fuck? I know, but I need four cheese. What the hell is this thing? Your bug is Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. I feel dizzy. <laughs> I think I'm on an ant. Wack type structures. These are an object lesson to help us learn a wildlife conservation message about the Barasinga deer of central India. In are estimated to be only 66 of the Barasinga deer remaining in central India. But this population was saved by the cooperation of the local Indian community. Like the shacks you see here, there were many small farms using space in and around India's Kamha National Park. These people were coming into contact with the deer and tigers that were also living there. Through cooperation with the Indian government, local communities agreed to relocate their villages. By moving, the farmers still had land to farm, but the tigers and their prey got more room to roam. Extinction. When an animal no longer exists, such as the dodo bird. These next creatures were themselves once extinct in nature. That is, they can only be found in captivity till recently. It is the Mongolian wild horse. Make sure you look for the two babies. They were born just last month. The Mongolian wild horse is the only true wild horse in existence today. You may notice they look a little different from the horses you can see down in Central Park. They are shorter and stockier in stature. They have that dark red mane on the back of their necks. There are also certain genetic differences. The Mongolian wild horse has recently been reintroduced into Asia in the wild. Through the efforts of zoos here in North America and in China. And captive breeding of the Mongolian wild horse began back in 1901. With a group of just 28 horses to work with. 
Mizzou received its first Mongolian wild horses in 1902. We've maintained our herd ever since, so it's quite an interesting history. Mizzou has with these horses, and here's a little bit more about their history. The first accounts of Mongolian wild horses come from rock engravings, paintings, and even cave drawings that date back more than 20,000 years. And the first written accounts were from Tibet, sometime around 900 AD. But these horses remained largely unknown and unnamed to the Western world for many years. During an expedition to Central Asia in 1879... Those are the drivers on the Bronx River Parkway right behind you, just a few feet away from where you are sitting. Large wooden fence in front of you is a sound barrier designed to help dampen the noise from the parkway. Provide the animals with some peace and quiet. I want to remind everyone to sit down at all times, especially now as we're going to be looking for our tigers. We're going to be looking for a Malayan tiger, a 10 year old female. Stripes are an excellent form of camouflage. So help me out, explorers. Keep your eyes peeled. You can see her before I do. Don't hesitate to point her out so we can all get a look. Just don't lean over the railing. She is a carnivore. She can eat 40 pounds of meat in one meal. I feel like you have 160 hamburgers for lunch. After a meal like that, she can take a nice little 20 hour nap. We'll be ready for more action. Why don't I see them? <laughs> like. Well, I'd be looking in shady spots if I were you. That's where I'd be if I were in a fur coat. Where, oh, where might our tiger be at this moment? There's only one tiger in here at a time. Tigers are not especially social creatures. They don't spend a lot of time with other tigers, except to take care of certain necessary things during the course of the year. In the grass, to the right. Playfully there on the hillside. We'll go right by our tiger. And there she is. Oh, there. There are fewer than 3,000 tigers left today on Earth in all the wild. Loss of prey, lack of habitat, and poaching have decimated the tiger. If you want to see more of our tigers, be sure to go up to Tiger Mountain. That's freaking awesome. That's a good place to see more of our tiger tigers. And if you want to see another tiger, I'll be available. As we come down the hill, up the hill to the right, you'll see where he runs the herd. Many of those young ones are his offspring. And then we're looking for axis deer, brown deer with white spots. From India and Sri Lanka, they never lose their white spots, no matter how hard they scrub. And they've been part of the Bronx Zoo family since the year we opened, in 1899. You can see them here amongst the peafowl. We're also uh, looking for beautiful. the Barasinga deer that we talked about earlier. Look down to the right in the mud puddle after the tree. Right along the fallen tree, it's a bit of a Barasinga park party, though some of the axis deer are invited, a couple of mammals anyway. So that looks fun. Next we're looking for the Babarusa, pig-like creature with two sets of tusks that erupt from its snout and curve back toward its eyes. Once we get to the large bamboo thicket, be looking through the bamboo and along the fence line. We're going to be looking for males and females throughout this fenced-in area through the bamboo. So again, be looking through the bamboo. They're a small little pig-like creature Kind of rotund, portly, portly pepper pots. Some of the females are. Keep your eyes peeled. Very small, hairless. The word does mean pig deer in the melee tongue. These next ladies are hard to miss. It's difficult to hide when you weigh 10,000 pounds. This is the world's largest land mammal, the Asian elephant. Two of our 40-year-old girls, Patty and Maxine. Each day they eat 200 pounds of hay. And that 200 pounds of hay has to go somewhere, as you can tell. And they drink 60 gallons of water a day. Now, look at their trunks. Distinguishing feature. They could pick up an egg without breaking it. Or they could rip down one of these trees. They know 
notice us. And they keep cool by throwing dirt on their backs. Might be something I try later today. They are best <laughs> friends, Patty and Maxine. They take very good care of each other, and we take good care of them. In addition to regular baths, the girls get pedicures twice a week. It is the Asian elephant, very majestic behemoth, becoming increasingly rare in our cosmos. Next, we're looking for the Indian rhinoceros. Almost as big and just as rare. What noise does rhino make? The rhino today is highly endangered. Fewer than 2,000 in all of India and Nepal. We have seven here at the zoo. We've had success, but breeding is a challenge. As the mother rhino is pregnant for 16 months at a time. Wow. At the end of which time she gives birth to a 150 pound baby. Look through the woods there by the rocks. We're gonna get another look at her here as we slow down. Look through the woods, standing by the rocks. There's one rock that's kind of moving. That's not a rock at all, is it? No, that's our female rhino. There she is. She's on the move. Keep her cool in the grass. Now, if you look to your right, you'll see the rhino's mud wallow, another popular attraction for the rhinos. Coming this way. This mud wallow in front of us functions as her bathtub, swimming pool, drinking fountain, and toilet bowl, all in one convenient location. <laughs> and the zoo did not make that for the rhinos. The rhinos moved in and they stomped down the mud. They made that all by themselves, and no human effort was involved. Really a remarkable creature. I feel like you've gone back in time. Rhinos can run 30 miles an hour, but they cannot outrun the poachers, which hunt them down and slaughter them mercilessly for their horns. Here's more about the flight of the rhino. The horn of a rhinoceros is very different from that of a goat or antelope. It is not attached to the skull. Rhino horn is made from compressed carotene fibers, the same material that is found in fingernails and hair. Although rhinos are a protected species, poaching still occurs. Rhinos are killed for the body parts, some people believe that this horn has special medicinal powers. It is also used as an ingredient in some traditional Asian medicines, and the rhino horn is also prized in some cultures for making dagger hands. We've got Formosan Sika deer in the next clearing from the island of Taiwan, formerly known as Formosa. And so those deer are actually made in Taiwan. And then look to the right, sandbar deer, Southeast Asia's largest deer. They also weigh five feet tall on the shoulders, 650 pounds. I also want to look for Indian muntjac deer and the hog deer. Wow. And then the as well. The zoo provides many enrichment opportunities for the enriching of the animals' lives here at the zoo. Enrichment is the term used to describe the wide variety of items and activities we provide for our animals to help keep them both physically and mentally active. Keepers might spray scents or hide food to encourage exploration. They may put out balls, boxes, or other so-called toys for animals to play with. Enrichment also includes husbandry training. Animals voluntarily work with their keepers and learn behaviors that can help us provide the very best care. Enrichment activities allow the animals different outlets to expend their energy, stretching both their physical and mental muscles. So it's important to see how much space the animals have in which to run around and roam here in Asia. And we're also going to be looking for Nilgai antelope, as we mentioned, as well as China's tufted deer. Small dark brown little deer. You may notice some of the trees throughout Asia are wrapped in wire. That's an effort to protect the bark of the trees from the animals that like to sharpen their horns and antlers on the tree bark. So some of the trees we wrap in wire. Some of the 
other cheese we wrap in bacon because everything is so delicious when you wrap it in bacon. And we're also going to look for China's tufted deer, a small dark brown little deer, no bigger than 40 pounds. As we make the next turn, we'll be at the high point of our journey, 35 feet above the water, a great place to take a picture, show people how beautiful the Bronx is. We'll to see some of New York City's native wildlife. The WCS plays an active role preserving the Bronx River Corridor. As a Bronx resident, I'm thankful for all that WCS does to help keep our borough beautiful. Bronx is a great place to live and to work. Incidentally, the Bronx was recently voted the fifth happiest borough in all of New York City. <laughs> so we got that going for us, which is nice. Something to be proud of. And here's an opportunity to see the beautiful Bronx. So you can see some fish on the surface, some turtles, and look to your right, you'll see the Himalayan tar on the rocks. And they are very much accustomed to life on the rocks, being that they are from the Himalayan mountains. Some of the highest jumpers in all the zoo, 10 foot vertical lead. And during mating season, we'll see amazing head footing battles. After the babies are born, it is the females who take care of the babies. The males just go off and play Xbox. And we're going to be looking for the red panda. All the way in front of me, we're going to go by a very big V-shaped or Y-shaped sort of tree. And there's going to be a small exhibit area. And that's where we want to be looking, so get ready to be looking right. I can see him from here, he's actually on the ground. So in front of me, again, to review, big V-shaped tree. Right behind the big V-shaped tree, small exhibit area with little trees. In this little exhibit area, a red panda. And you can see he's on the ground now to the right if you look down. So he's on the ground, so you got to be looking down to the right. He's right below the first car now. Keep looking down to the right. Once you pass him, look back to the left and get another look if you look back to the left. Back and to the left. So now he's back up under the tree, and I've lost sight of him. So you're on your own. You've got to navigate You're for yourselves. It's up to you, old boy. So... Yeah, they're done. And that red panda. He's all the way from Nepal, where he's known as Hun Ho. Means Firefox. The Wildlife Conservation Society manages five parks in New York City. Bronx Zoo, Prospect Park Zoo, Central Park Zoo, Queen Zoo, New York Aquarium, and Coney Island. Do you want to help us save wildlife? Become a WCS member. You'll get a lot of benefits for doing that. It'll help us save wildlife. I want to ask everyone to remain seated. We're going to come to a brief stop, then we're going to move again. Please do remain seated. We did just pass through 60 acres of wild Asia. It's a fraction of the 265 acres that comprise the Bronx Zoo, the largest urban zoo in the United States. So there. Again, please remain seated, but it's a good time to remind everyone, take a look around you. Make sure you have all your personal belongings, electronic devices, cell phones, cameras, backpacks, book bags, pocketbooks, purses, satchels, duffel bags, attache cases, laundry bags, lunch boxes, luggage, fanny packs, jet packs, man purses. Don't leave anything behind on the Wild Asia monorail. Make sure anyone who got on the monorail with you also gets off the monorail with you. Children, don't forget your parents. Again, please remain seated. We're going to pause here 10 seconds for station ID. 
and then we'll be moving again momentarily. Please just remain seated. The train ahead of us is moving. On behalf of the WCS, my name is Joel. Thanks for spending part of your busy summer season with us. The zoo's open year-round. Be back soon. And we hope you'll have a great rest of the stay here at the historic Bronx Zoo. There's much of view, a view of things on the uh, train ride.
Best place to save from. That was terrible. Almost there, we are here. I wonder who represents that. Uh huh. All the birds, Tiger Mountain, Sea Lion Pool, Bison Road Range, beach. parking lot B and parking lot F. Road right, B is Bronx River. Bronx River. That's us. That's us. B for Bronx. I'm going to wait until the stroller is out. <laughs> <laughs> no, what can they do?